this program are those of the commenters alone. They do not represent the views or opinions of Valley News Live, our parent company, or our advertisers. Welcome back. With me from Bismarck, U.S. District Attorney of North Dakota, Mr. Tim Purden. Mr. Purden, thanks for joining me today. I appreciate your time. Obviously, a big meeting in Fort Totten last Wednesday talking about the safety of Spirit Lake kids. I want to start here. How many cases, since you've been our district attorney, how many cases have been referred to you about sexual abuse cases uh, for prosecution? Well, uh, we don't, uh, I don't have the, the exact number at my fingertips, Chris, but what I can tell you is that uh, since I've been U.S. Attorney, which is a little over two and a half years now, uh, the number of cases that the U.S. Attorney's Office is prosecuting coming off the reservations in North Dakota has increased over 80 percent. From fiscal year 2009 to fiscal year 2012, uh, we've seen a steep increase in the number of cases that we're filing coming off all the reservations. Uh, Spirit Lake obviously has uh, been in the news lately, uh, some, some concerning uh, uh, incidents there, and uh, we've been working with the BIA and the FBI uh, to investigate really all the, all the uh, allegations that, get, that, uh, that come to us. So do you have a specific number for last year that were prosecuted? Uh, I don't at my fingertips. I can tell you that uh, we report all the convictions, uh, guilty pleas, and sentences uh, that we obtain uh, in the U.S. Attorney's Office off the reservations, those are all available on our website. Uh, we uh, keep a track of our press releases there where we're able to document the guilty pleas, the sentences, uh, sometimes lengthy, physical, uh, lengthy federal prison sentences that we are able to obtain in these cases. Um, so that's a great resource for folks to look at and see what we've been up to on the reservations. As you know, there's Mr. Thomas Sullivan. He's a regional administrator with the Administration for Children and Families. He's got 12 mandated reports that have come out of the Spirit Lake situation, talking about the safety for kids. It was reported that last Wednesday at this meeting, you basically stood up and said that his allegations are false. Did you say that? Well, actually, the, those comments were made by the BIA uh, representatives that were there. I may have mentioned them in my comments, but I think it's important to take those uh, in context. And, and the BIA, uh, what they said was that uh, after these in various allegations by Thomas Sullivan had been investigated, they really fell into three categories. Uh, there were reports that he had made that turned out not to be true, and that's not surprising. Most of the information that he's reporting is, is secondhand. He's not a witness to a crime. People are coming uh, to him uh, with information, and he's passing that along to law enforcement. Uh, some of them, uh, the reports were determined to be false. Some of the reports were investigated. They were not able to be substantiated. And thirdly, uh, there were a number of allegations that uh, have led to or, or confirmed ongoing cases. So. Uh, again, th what's being lost there, I think, is the fact that all of those allegations uh, that have come to light, that have been made, have been turned over to law enforcement, to the BIA, to the Federal Bureau of Investigation, and the career professional law enforcement agents that work the reservation every day have investigated those. Now, not every uh, allegation that is reported to Mr. Sullivan or that is reported to me turns out to be true or turns out to be substantiated by the investigation. What I've tried to do is make sure that the FBI and the BIA uh, are following up on every one of those allegations and I've been briefed by them on their efforts and, and I'm comfortable that those uh, allegations have all been investigated. Mr. Purton, do you believe the BIA and the FBI are doing their job at Spirit Lake? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, the FBI agents who work Spirit Lake uh, I've worked with them now for the last two and a half years. I worked with them uh, before that when I was in private practice. You have some outstanding law enforcement officers, people who are dedicated to, to justice for, for uh, Native American kids, and the BIA law enforcement. Nationally, the BIA law enforcement has made huge strides over the last couple of years, professionalizing that department and, and hiring new agents. And the agents we have working Spirit Lake, uh, my line prosecutors work with them on a daily basis, and uh, we're very satisfied that the allegations that have been made, uh, they've been forwarded to law enforcement, and once law enforcement gets them, they, they dig into them. They go talk so to Mr. people. So, Mr. Perth, let go, me share this with you. Let me share evidence. this with you, sir, because we, I do have a sure. graphic that I do want to pull up from Mr. Sullivan's 12th mandated report, and it says this. On September 29th, 2012, a 13-year-old little girl was raped in her home by a 37-year-old man. Law enforcement was called. The name and a description of the rapist was provided. No rape kit was collected. More than three weeks elapsed before the alleged rapist was interviewed. The little girl's mother was told over the phone by FBI agent Sema that the FBI had turned the case over to the BIA. The BIA senior criminal investigator called the mother to tell her that he had spoken with the alleged rapist who told him, hey, that girl wanted to have sex with me. What was I supposed to do? 
and you're telling me that they're doing their job, sir? A 13-year-old had sex with a 37-year-old, and you're saying they're doing their job? Well, Chris, uh, unfortunately, uh, you have an allegation there. Um, I can't speak to uh, the facts of ongoing investigation. Sir, this girl uh, contracted an STD. Excuse me. Defendant. This girl contracted well, an STD. Chris, uh, uh, what I would say to you is that I'm aware of that allegation. Uh, I've spoken with FBI and the BIA about that allegation. And that specific allegation, I can't get into the facts. I can't refute you point for point because I'm not allowed to under the rules. But I can tell you that that investigation was undertaken. I've been briefed on it. And not everything that you've reported right there is accurate. Um, I, I unfortunately have to deal with uh, evidence, uh, statements that we can present in court. And not every allegation that we get, that we investigate, turns out to be uh, accurate, generally, speaking generally. Um, I have been briefed by the FBI and by the BIA. I am confident that the career law enforcement agents that are working that reservation take these allegations as seriously as I do and as seriously as you do, Chris, and as seriously as your viewers do. Unfortunately, I can't get into the specifics of a specific case. Uh, I just can't. So, Department can, of Justice and, and I respect that, prohibit Mr. us from talking about ongoing cases, and I, I wish I could, but that's where we're at. Mr. Purden, I respect that. The question after you is this, though. This young girl now is actually... Some, for some reason, locked up in South Dakota away from her family. Can you explain that? Uh, I'm, I'm not familiar with the, with the, again, I can't discuss the facts of an ongoing investigation. There may be a social services case open on this young girl. I don't know. If so, BIA social services, which is a separate arm than the BIA law enforcement, would be, uh, uh, would be handling that. And again, those, those are private cases. It's like a juvenile court case. Uh, uh, a, a social service case is, is private. That's, Chris, it's really one of the frustrating things about this situation is that because of the privacy concerns for victims, uh, the rights that defendants have to a fair trial, not to be tried in the press, that we're not able to really respond on a case-by-case, incident-by-incident basis. I've really tried in order to help and, and support my partners at BIA and FBI to talk generally about this and, and say that I'm convinced, having been briefed by the FBI generally on all of these allegations, that those FBI agents and those BIA agents are running down these investigations. They're looking into them. Not every case is accurate as, as reported by the, by the person who reports it to law enforcement. And we're not always able uh, to substantiate the claims. Some of them turn out to be just rumor. But I can guarantee you this. If an allegation comes to me, I get it to law enforcement, and we follow up with FBI and BIA and make sure that they are conducting a full and complete and thorough investigation of those charges. Mr. Purdue, we know this is a tough situation. Last question for you, and if you can be brief, even with a yes or no, I've got an email here from Mr. Thomas Sullivan written to you, asking you for a written statement saying specifically what allegations that you claim are false and or Larry Roberts from the BIA share with me, write to me, put it in writing which ones are false. Will you write to Mr. Sullivan and explain to him which allegations specifically out of his 12 mandated reports are inaccurate and or false? I have communicated with, uh, with the, the uh, federal agency that uh, Mr. Sullivan works for. He does not speak for the uh, ACF, uh, a, the Department of Human Services. I've in, I have uh, discussed this matter with uh, the managers of that department. Uh, I have attempted to share with them the information I have, what FBI and BIA so has gathered, just contact so that Mr. they can Sullivan. make their own determination. Why not just contact uh, this gentleman? Mr. S Mr. Sullivan uh, is, is a, a potentially uh, a reporter of, of, uh, to law enforcement. He's potentially a witness. So we have to make sure that when he's communicated with, it's, it's through the FBI, through the BIA, uh, those sorts of things. His allegations uh, are taken very seriously. Um, like I said, some of them have certainly uh, uh, been shown to uh, been substantiated. We have ongoing investigations. Others, not surprisingly, have turned out to be incomplete. That's, that's what's going to happen when you have allegations that are made third hand. We need, and I have worked hard to ensure that the FBI is working to interview the witnesses, to gather the evidence, gather forensic evidence where, uh, where appropriate, and really work hard to, to track these investigations down and make sure we get a thorough investigation of these, invest, of these allegations. Mr. Pur Mr. Purden, thank you so much for your time. I do want to have you back on so we can follow this closely and keep up whatever hard work you can to get these uh, kids safe in their home. Stay close. When we come back, we're going to discuss a situation that happened in Perm recently. And also, is Joe Flacco way overpaid? That's coming up next right here on 630 Point of View.